Amber Smith hit an emotional wall in February. She says it was taking a toll on her work and her personal relationships. So she tried something she's never done before. She started seeing a psychologist. It's been, you know, tough to feel isolated and like you don't have access to your uh, friends and family in the way that you would. It was really hard to just feel like yourself. Millennials and Gen Z are most likely to admit it's a struggle. When you ask them to self-report their level of mental health, they are more likely to report it as poor or bad compared to their older counterparts. There's been a huge spike in virtual therapy sessions at the Ontario Shores Centre for Mental Health, mirroring a trend seen right across the country. We used to do about 400 virtual care visits a month pre-pandemic, and we are now doing anywhere between uh, 4,000 and 6,000 virtual care visits uh, a month. Lack of mental health care is something Canada and the United States have in common because Canada's universal health care doesn't include mental health. This is Rebel HQ. I'm Sandy Lovis. I have experience navigating the mental health system and can tell you it's difficult when you're not in crisis and nearly impossible when you are. That was before the pandemic. During COVID, it's only gotten worse. People were put under more financial stress. There's the constant fear of losing loved ones or catching it yourself. Folks in unhealthy relationships were forced to spend more time together, and many people lost their jobs and homes. All of this caused a massive surge of people in need of professional therapists. And since our systems are designed to profit when there's high demand, there is never enough professionals to meet the needs of people to begin with. From the Washington Post, it has been difficult to find mental health counseling in much of the United States for years, long before the coronavirus pandemic began. But now after two years of unrelenting stress, turmoil, and grief, many people seeking help are confronting a system at or beyond capacity. It's an adequacy for this moment plainly exposed. It is even more difficult to find specialized care for children or those with lower income. Assistance of any kind is in short supply in rural areas, where all healthcare choices are more limited than they are for residents of cities and suburbia. Those hoping to find Black or Latino therapists face even more limited options. It's not like we can mass produce therapists in a factory. Yet, I'm sure Elon Musk is working on it. You need people interested in the profession and it takes years to train them. And the people most likely to have access to that level of education are white and come from well-to-do backgrounds. We need more options. It's important to shop around for a therapist who best works with you. Being on a wait list for over a year when you're in crisis is not an option. And settling for any therapist you can see can be detrimental if that therapist brings their internalized racism and biases into the sessions. I'm queer, non-binary, child-free by choice, and polyamorous. If I sit down with a therapist and they have the bias of, what you need to do is get into a monogamous relationship with a man and raise a family? No, 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 not, not helpful, not helpful at all. No, nuh -uh. <laughs> Most therapists are trained with curriculum created by the same white, well-to-do folks who can afford to take the courses. We need therapists from different backgrounds, cultures, religions, identity, trained in ways that reflect who they are and what their lived experience is, so they can counsel people in ways that best resonate with them. But the biggest thing to keep in mind, no amount of talk therapy will help if your mental health is in crisis because of material reasons like the fear of losing your home or not being able to pay for basic needs. People with less suffer the most. For people living with poverty, finding the help they need, well, that's just not an option. A simple way for our countries to take pressure off the system would be to take pressure off people. A guaranteed livable income tied to the cost of living and can't be exploited by landlords and corporations. So socialized housing and socialized transportation, electricity too. Grocery stores, that, that would also be good and everything, just, just socialized everything. That would be a good start and it's possible to do now. Our governments are choosing not to. Support the people who support you and get them into office. If you want to see more of my stuff, you can look for me on social media as Left of the Box. Don't forget to hit buttons and leave comments. 
Thanks for watching. And until next time, get informed, get involved.